it does the same thing here. Hello and welcome to another video. This will be another Boogie 2988 reaction. Uh, this one's called 1200 Pounds of Men, Boogie 2988's Friends. This is another documentary extra scenes here. So let's see what happens in this video. Eventually these type of videos will stop. This has just been common because of the documentary that recently came out on Halloween. Uh, it's just like the origin story stuff as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, anyways, uh, we are going to see what happens in this video. Also, ignore that achievement because I'm also uh, doing try, play, playing this Pickle 2 game, a game I have never played before. I played the original Pickle on 360, and recently, as you're going to see a video, a Pickle video pop up uh, probably tonight. But I don't know, because I still have a bit of reactions to catch up on. But I'm almost to the point where it's only going to be half my left that I need to catch up on. So, But anyways, with that being said, let's get into this reaction. So I am currently traveling, which means it's a little bit harder for me to make videos. So I did want to show you another clip from my documentary, since I'm hanging out with my girlfriend's family for the holidays. And I feel like family is what you make it, not the blood you're born to, but the people that you choose to be in your life. And I'm blessed to have a group of friends that have stuck through me through all of it. Yeah. Before I was on YouTube, when I was on disability and just trying to exist, uh, the rise in fame, and then the absolute chaos that happened in 2017 up till now. I had an opportunity while shooting this documentary to just sit down That's and talk to my friends. And honestly, I think it's just a wonderful, wholesome conversation. And it highlights some of my favorite human beings, people I genuinely love and who genuinely love me. What a better way to celebrate this American holiday. Enjoy the video. So this is my friend, Seth. I don't know you. Me and him have been friends for about a decade now. We learned, uh, we became friends over a game of magic. I have a really funny story about Seth. One time, I got into my mind that I was going to tweet a before and after photo standing next to him before my surgery and after my surgery. People think I look so much like Seth that they thought it was an actual photo of me. And then on top of that, didn't you say you've had people ask you if you were me in this town? Oh, yeah, there's been several run-ins. Do you say yes that you're yeah, me? Yeah, I just act like you. Do you take a photo with them or like sign something? No one's asked me that far. They're just like, oh, I love your video. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. And then, like, Philip, I mean, he's nowhere near as big as, as uh. your average person. But, I don't know, you, you've been dealing with health issues in the last year, right? It's pretty cool that we're seeing this. It's always good to see the uh, friends that Boogie has in real life that's outside of YouTube. Not counting Kid Beyond the Camera, not counting Keemstar, not counting McJuggernuggets. Those are YouTube mm -hmm. friends. What he's talking about is the friends he's had for a long time. Like the Seth guy. So it's it's always good to get to... Uh, you know, Boogie's, these, videos, Bo these videos Boogie has been making lately, I've been enjoying them, especially because we're getting to know Boogie even more than we ever have in the past when he has uploaded anything. So... Yeah, I'm getting bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think it is? I mean, like, I know, but tell tell them. Why do you think that is? Well, uh, laziness more more than anything. I just uh, not motivated to get into my garage and lift the weights, you know, until earlier this year. Okay, so Seth, I mean, you've been big for a while, right? Yeah. I don't know what life. your weight is, but you are probably not as big as I was at my biggest. I was like 587, uh, right? I'm probably there easily, if not more. Like... The last time I weighed myself was several years ago, and it was 530. Um, well, probably I don't think you're as big as I was, but okay. I know how much pain I was in at that size. How are, how's your mobility? How's your strength? How are you Not doing? Not great. Are you sleeping right? Are you, are you using a CPAP machine? Do you need no. one? I have an irrational fear of doctors, so I haven't gotten to the doctor at all. Boy, being fat and having a fear of doctors is a bad combo, ain't it? Yeah. That's dangerous. So... I have certain friends in my life who have tried to convince me of CPAP. Uh, I hope I'm one of them. I'm like, yeah. let me convince you now. But, like, why Why do you think you've struggled with making the right choices and trying to lose the weight? 
If you've got an Android phone, here are five reasons why you need the Opera browser. Number one is a built-in wow. ad blocking. Not only does this make browsing the web a better experience by blocking annoying ads, but it's also faster since you're not loading ads alongside those web pages. Two, it's got a built-in VPN that's actually completely free to use, so you can make sure your browsing sessions are private and secure. Three, it has built-in AI that's powered by oh, ChatGPT. The right choices and trying to lose the weight. I think if I were to like really look at it, I think most of it is that it is an addiction type thing, right? I've I have noticed that there are times of anxiety where like if I don't have chocolate in the house, even if I'm not eating it, right? If I don't have that stash, it's like oh, you know, I don't know if that goes into like maybe I, I don't know where that comes from, but like some of it is the addiction part. Yeah. Um, I know the things I should do. I just have to buckle down and do it. And there was a big voice for me growing up of, you just aren't um, disciplined enough, right? I don't have the discipline. And so for me, a big part of it is, well, if I were really disciplined enough, I would do the food thing and take care of it. Uh, some of it is laziness. Just it's easier to order. It's easier to do that than cook for yourself. Some of it is... I don't know. I think that's most covered most of the bases for me. Is is just a culmination of addiction, but also like I'm weak if I can't defeat it myself. But no, so Philip, you're more newly fat, as I like to call it. Like you, you, uh, you, you've only really been gaining weight over the last couple of years. You've always been like a little plus size, but mostly tall, right? It's only been the last yeah. couple of years you like put on some pounds, right? <laughs> I like the most mostly tall, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's it's relatively new. Just. Uh, Lack of motivation, I suppose. You know, just very low energy. So how, how, okay, two ways. Mm -hmm. How does it make you feel physically? Like, are you feeling sick? Are you feeling more tired? Are you sleeping worse? Like, how does, how does that affect you? Well, the, I've been sleeping worse, you know, because I got the sleep apnea thing going oh, on. that's true, yep. Uh, which I assume started a couple years ago, probably because of the, the slow weight gain. And it really honestly came about when I started getting money again, you know, because for a while I was really skirting the line of not having any money, you know, finally got out of college, yeah. got a job, started getting money that just really incentivized, I could just go get lunch every day. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm working at the office, I need to go get lunch. But as far as mobility goes, it's mostly the same, but I definitely get tired way faster. You know, I used to be, I, I've never said I've been in good shape, but I was in good enough shape. You know, like, yeah. I used to play sports, soccer, yeah. a little bit of football, you know, uh, paintball occasionally, you know. But it's, uh, I get tired stepping out of the shower sometimes, and I'm like, wow, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, does, does it affect your self-esteem? Like, how oh, do you feel self-esteem? That is a shakable one. That's, that's a strange one for me, because I've always been... How do I exist? You know, high school, for example, I always like, well, I was the fat kid, but I really wasn't that big compared to now, at least. But in my head, I was like, oh, I was always the fat kid. And that kind of, I don't know, I, I had really good self-esteem anyway. Yeah. It's like, well, and I bet you it's kind of a, a holdover. Like, I, I think I'm great, but I'm also very realistic. I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't date me either. But I think our friend group and friends don't necessarily make you fatter or less fat, but I think you would find yourself attracted to groups of friends that are similar, you know, things to do, right? Yeah. So, like, we all come over here, we play magic, we play video games, like, there's no movement, right? We're not going on hikes, we're not going to, you know, museums together, whatever. Right. So I think there is some of that similarity there, but I wouldn't say it's like, hanging out with Boogie has made me fatter. I think it's just that we both like games and we both like similar non-sedentary issues can i say some like some really fucked up shit um i've always felt more of a kinship with you than i do james because we've suffered some of the same issues and some of the same stuff like i know you have anxiety issues i know you have mental health issues and we relate on that level but also i know how hard it is to buy clothes at your size like because i had to do that for 20 years and i know how hard it is to like do some of the things you want to do or like date at your size and so i've always felt closer to you than your roommate for that reason. I love James, right? I'd take a bullet for James, but I would take two bullets for you. We could take you. a couple of bullets. We could take a couple of bullets for each other. Uh, and I'm not going to lie, Philip, like, 
in the last couple of years, I think I've thought slightly more favorably about you because I like you're having health issues, not even about your weight, but you're having health issues. And I'm like, and I know what that's like. I, I, I've got a bleeding heart for him. I want to help. And I also want to let you know that like, I, I understand because I've been struggling too. And so I do think there is like, I don't necessarily think it's the fatness or anything else, but I think for me, it's, it is common interests. But it's also common problems. Like that's something I'm looking for in somebody's life, so that we can either commiserate with it or beat it together. Right? Like that's that's what I one of the things I want for my support structure. I want to be able to come to you and be like, dude, my fucking I'm five years older than you now, and I'm like, fuck, it's killing me. You know what it's like? It's fucking killing you too. Oh yeah, it's killing me. And then we like fucking hug it out. You know, but if I go to a skinny friend and I'm like, dude, I can't see my dick anymore. He's like, well, I can see my dick. Shut, go fuck yourself, right? Like, I, I don't think a skinny dude is going to understand a lot of the shit that we're going through. You know, I think I think there's a few different types of people, but I think some people it takes going through an experience to be able to like have more of that type of view. I think for me it's different. I think for me, I feel like there's a skinny person in myself wanting to get out, and I have a lot of shame about being fat because I think I should be a more normal size versus, oh, I'm fat, so I, I will I knew commiser- that was a trophy. I knew that was a trophy. You guys just saw the notification in this reaction. Oh, my God. Yeah, because I am playing um, Pickle 2 while reacting to this. So, But, no, that is interesting to know, by the way, with what book is talking about. I may be playing Pickle, but I'm also listening to what they're saying as well. So, uh, yeah, anyways, let's go with other fat people because we're fat together yeah uh, i think there's a difference there i think that people can empathize with me and my i also like don't want to get together with friends and commiserate about the horrible shit that we deal with because like the world's a real shitty place if we look around real you know not even having to look around hard now right right yeah so like for friend groups i want something to have fun together and to like i don't know that that's where my goofy sense of humor comes from, by the way, is that for the, the like the four hours we're together, I want to enjoy all of my favorite shit. I want to enjoy my favorite food. I want to enjoy my favorite YouTube videos. I want to enjoy my favorite game. I want to enjoy my favorite people. And I just want to fucking forget that the internet fucking hates me. I want to forget that my career is fucking failing. I want to forget that I'm divorced. I want to forget that I just broke up with somebody. I just want to forget fucking life for a while. Um, but I've not always been able to do that. Like, I, I, I put you guys through hell. I, I think it's important to let the world know. In 2019, like, I walked around here openly suicidal, right? I... You've been very forward about some of your thoughts about yourself. Yeah. I have always thought that no one but you deserves to hear those sides. Like, the people on the internet are going to think what they're going to think, right? Yeah. And I think you've perhaps been a little bit, I wouldn't say too hard on yourself, maybe it is too hard on yourself, but like, you've been too vocal about it when you're just like, who, who gives a shit? Like, they don't need to hear that. Like, why the fuck didn't I lose you guys as friends during that period of time? Like, what made you stick through that shit? Like, the majority of the internet dumped me, like, yesterday's fucking news, but you guys kept coming over. What? Why? Yeah. I've always wondered. Because we thought you would kill yourself. <laughs> I am totally joking. No. I, I, because I think we see people on the internet, and like, so Ludwig talks a lot about the parasocial relationship with people, right? Yeah. And I think he makes a very good point that you're not friends with people you interact with on the internet. No, of course not. Yeah. And we see a lot more of like your personality. We we get to know you one on one, and like you're not this horrible demon that anyone makes you out to be. Also, like, I've got shitty parts of my personality. Like, we all have that, like, you're not a shitty person. Like, you're not who you are that, like, you're being vilified for. I think it's fair to say this entire friend group has a temper. <laughs> like, we all have individual tempers, right? Like, but, like, even in the last six weeks, Flint's gotten mad, you've gotten mad, you've gotten mad, I've gotten mad. Maybe it was at a game, maybe it was at a video game. It was just over something stupid. It wasn't, like, real anger, right? But I guess we do have, we all have our shit, right? And I've never thought less of anybody for getting, like, a little pissed at a game or some shit, right? So... I think we're all very opinionated. Yeah, yeah. I think we all, like, you know, we all have our own opinions about what's good and bad. I don't think that draws us together necessarily. I think it's more of, like, we all like magic. We all like, you know, smash the other stuff, like... Me, it was, a. Uh... 
I don't really do things during the weekday because of, you know, I have a normal work schedule and I have for the last couple of years, you know, eight to five. Yeah. So I get off work. I just don't want to do anything, you know, circles back to the low energy. I just want to watch YouTube. I want to play my video games, get my social interaction that way. Pop into. Oh, nice. Another friend of Bucky's. That's good. Discord, hang out with people. So the weekends where I don't have to do anything all day, you know, I have the Friday get together after work with Ellis and friends. And then, you know, I've been doing this coming over here for six years, yeah. you know, and it's, I'm very extroverted, so like during the week, I'm just like hibernating and slumbering, and then on the weekends, I'm like I'm ready to freaking roast. But you some come people. over on Saturday, and I'm being a sad sack, well, and I'm like fucking talking about how miserable I am. How was that enjoyable to you? Like, why did you stay? So it, it tracks all the way back to the beginning. Started coming over here, you know, the the golden era, as I always call it. You know, we had people outside, we had people inside. I could always go group A. This conversation's boring. Go inside group B. Okay, yeah. this conversation's boring. Go to group C. Okay, this is where I want to be. Yeah. And it was for so long, the Saturday get-togethers were the highlight of my week because I was just like, I get to go hang out with so many people I don't normally get to do stuff with. And then, you know, the numbers dwindled a little bit. We had some people who, you know, would come over for one reason or another, and slowly people started trickling. And but then, then COVID, like, cut us then, in half. And COVID cut us in half, and then... There was, you know, 2019, you know, you hit critical mass and, you know, people just didn't want to be around anymore. Yep, and I, resp I respect that. I, yeah, I definitely considered not coming back over, but I'm just like, man, uh, who else am I going to get to roast? No, I'm kidding. Uh, it was just more like you were going through a rough time. I was like, man, if everyone leaves, it's not going to be pretty, but... There were a couple times where I just wanted to leave. Yeah. I remember specifically there was a day we were over there. I was sitting down. You came down. You sat next to me. And you were like, uh, so what would you do this week? As soon as I started talking, uh -oh. you were like, that's cool. And then you started talking about yeah. what you were doing. I remember telling you, I was like, Boogie, it's great. If you want to talk about yourself, you can. This is your house. You told me. But don't you dare come over here ask me what I'm doing, and then immediately cut me off yeah. and start talking yeah. about what you're doing. I was like, I will leave okay, if you so do it again. Okay, so I have a big question for you. You knew me before the divorce. Mm -hmm. You knew me through the divorce. Then you saw me in 2018 and 19 through the divorce, and now you know me now. Would you say that I changed between the divorce and while I was recuperating through the divorce, and now would you say, like, how would you compare me now to like when I was married, how would you compare me in 2019 to when I was married? Like, did you see me going through shit? Do you think I've gotten better? Do you think I got worse for a while? Like, I've always, like, because in my opinion, I was a pretty normally happy-go-lucky guy. And even when I was fighting with my wife all the time, the divorce, the marriage was falling apart. I still did a pretty good job of masking on Saturdays. Really? So it was like during the end of the marriage that I started like shifting. Well. You know, broad strokes and all that, but I, in the least braggy way possible, because I don't like to brag about myself, I think I'm a pretty good judge of character. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't want to be like, ooh, I can see through the cracks, but I know the telltale signs of stuff. I'm just like, oh, okay, this is a weird conversation. I don't need to be here. But comparatively, and I will say, you know, at the beginning of it, I was definitely more you know, Dez's friend, and we've talked about this. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. more her friend, so I didn't know what? a whole lot about you per se, other than... Dez? Hold on. Isn't that who he's with now? I have to look up the name of Bookie's ex-wife. If her name is Dez too, then that is a... That's so ironic. That's real, uh, that's coincidence right there. Because Dez is that 20-year-old that Bookie's with now. If that was his wife's name too... That's interesting. The, you know, bolsterous persona you put on. I'm like, oh yeah, just Boogie's doing his internet boogish feel. But right, you know, right, 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 yeah. as time has progressed, the group's gotten smaller. It's gotten more intimate. I, I mean, absolutely. Like you're leaps and bounds better than you were before because you know during that the beginning it was like okay he's just doing his thing and then the rough patch was like okay this this sucks. Do you think? That the person I was in 2019 was the person I always was in secret? Or do you think I changed because I was going through shit? Also, the same question to you. Would you say that I, I went through shit and got worse, or do you think I was always secretly that way? Well, I mean, 
you, it definitely changed. Like, you were going through a big life shift. Like, you, the divorce was massive. The surgery was massive. Like, there's no way you wouldn't have changed. Like, Would you say I was an asshole? Yeah, I totally get that. You know? But, no, again, I'm. Uh, this is a pretty good video. And uh, hopefully Boogie does more of these. But there's only so much more of these he can do over a documentary that got sized down to an hour. So... In 2019, because I, I, I would you say I was being quite an asshole in 2019? I'm gonna put it kindly and say, prior to 2019, you didn't seek out help. That's you, you were. I think you definitely thought like, I'm on this YouTube thing. There's not a floor, right? I'm not gonna fail. Right. Um, and I think that once things started going downward for you, whether it was divorce or other things, I think you eventually recognized I need to do something. Or I'm just not gonna have friends, or whatever the fears, you know, no, were fulfilling for you. Yeah, like, but I think as, you, our, as our group started to get smaller, I'm like, holy fuck, these guys can't keep dealing with this shit, right? Like I'm putting so much on these. Damn, that was an interesting video, though. Um, and hopefully, Bucky does more of these videos. But yeah, uh, there are two more reactions, Bucky. I need to do. I'm gonna do one more tonight, which is less than five minutes long. But it's not gonna be the next reaction, though. Uh, and then, um, yeah, after that, I'm not sure, really. I mean, I, I know I'm going to do the Half My Roblox. Actually, I think I'll do that one next, the Half My Roblox reaction, so. Uh, but, yeah. But, yeah, this is an interesting video, to say the least, and all that, so. Um, yeah, I'd say this is a pretty good video on Boogie's part, so. And I don't care what people think of Boogie. People are literally hating him for no reason. And if I continue to see people hating on him or people comment on my reactions saying that I'm supporting a horrible person when Boogie's not a horrible person, uh, yeah, I will be making a discussion video about that. But so far, I've only gotten one of those comments and I have since hit that user from channel. So that person can't comment on my videos anymore. Not just Boogie, but ending videos so uh yeah anyways i'm gonna go ahead and end this video here stay tuned for the next one